everybody, welcome back in my videos of uh, my top 50 of all times, uh, my 50 top 50 board games of all time. So I mean the 50 games that I like the most at this moment in time that I already played. Because of course there might be lots of games which I haven't played yet, which might be even more awesome than the games on this list. So without further ado, uh, let's go to my number 40. My number 40 dropped, well, uh, quite some places, I think 22 places since last year, just because there are so many great games that came out in 2015 or that I played last year. And this game is called Diamonds, a game by Mike Fitzgerald, which is a Awesome, awesome designer, but some games of his are really hard to get here in Belgium. Yes, Mike, please, please get Baseball Highlights 2045 to Belgium, please. I really want to have that game. But that aside, Diamonds is this awesome but quite simple trick-taking game. You have four suits, hearts, spades, clovers and diamonds, of course. <laughs> Uh, and those goes from number 1 to 15. Each time you try to take uh, to score a trick or not, might be the case as well. And if you score a trick of a certain suit, you get to do the action belonging to that suit. You have the four suits, four actions. You can put diamonds or these diamond pieces. You can put a diamond from the reserve in front of your safe. You can move a, a diamond in front of your safe into the safe. You can also steal a diamond in front of someone's safe and put it in front of your safe. Or you can put diamonds, of course, the most important one. You can put a diamond directly into your safe from the reserve. Why do you want those diamonds in your safe? Because diamonds in your safe cannot be stolen and are worth double points at the end of the game. Now, the cool part is if you cannot follow suit, you can have to play, of course, another card not belonging to that suit. And that allows you to do the action belonging to that suit you played immediately. So things go back and forth really smooth, really fast, plays really quick. It plays up to five or six players. Let's see if you can find it to six players. So it, and it works well, I think best three to six players. Really awesome, quick, easy game. I taught it to some young, very young people. Uh, a while ago and it worked uh, so I really like this one. My number 40 Diamonds Okay so we are often looking for these diamonds in the rough these things that we don't know are good but they are out there and they are just waiting to be found. My number 39 is a game that I really wasn't planning to buy or to try even but someone told me it was quite worth trying it out. It wasn't uh, expensive so I bought it at Essen Spiel and since then I've been liking it quite a bit. I'm talking about Dino Twist. Now, Dino Twist is this kind of set collection game with simultaneously playing cards in which you have this island in the middle of the table with dinosaurs. In the beginning there are small dinosaurs and you are trying to get those dinosaurs onto your island. You're trying to get the strongest dinosaurs on your island before the volcano explodes or bursts on the island and the game ends. Really interesting, so each round people play one or two cards uh, from their hand on the table, face down. When everybody has chosen a card or two, they reveal them and the lowest number gets to go first. Uh, they can grab a dinosaur from the same color and the lower number from the table and put it on the exact spot on their island, replacing it by their lowest card that they played. And that's what just happens. Each player goes it, uh, around when everybody has done their thing, you go to the next round, and so on and so on. It, it, it sounds really simple, it is really simple, but it has a little bit of bluffing, of trying to find out what your opponent is going to play. Do I want to play a fast dinosaur and score lower points? Do I want to play two dinosaurs to get a high number? Uh, so I can get a big dinosaur from the island, but what won't my opponent steal that 
high one away before I get to do my action and you're also trying to get your island full up first because it scores you bonus points really interesting game, really fun, the artwork is really beautiful and cute and I really like this one, it has grown on me since the first time I played it and it even got to my number 31 on this list, Dino Twist My number 38 raised from number 67, so it has done really well this year. It's one that I really love to play when I'm with a group of four to six players. I prefer even six players is the best, I think, because it is a hectic game. You are just betting on things you have no clue about, and that makes it really fun if you're into that kind of game. I'm talking about Camelot in which each player is betting on these five camels that are racing against each other. So they're not your camels, you're just sitting around the track trying, hoping to bet on the camel that ends the, uh, the, 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 the race first or the uh, or is last or first or last at the end of the game because you also can bet on which camel is last. But things work with dice, so you have no clue what's going to happen. You might guess a little bit, you might do some calculation in your head of the odds that are there, but there are so many things that can work against those odds as well. A really fun game, a really great team, the artwork is cool, you have this cool pyramid which is so unnecessary but it looks great it's just add, you add the dice into uh, put the dice into the pyramid and each time you decide to move a camel you put you take the, the pyramid turn it around you push this thing a bit in, and there is one die that drops out of it and that color of camel moves also cool is when a camel enters a spot of a place where there's already a camel it goes stacks on top of it and well that's just also cool to see. Candle Up, really fun family game, not for everyone, really light, really silly. I like it a lot, not for everyone, but if you like silly games of or just want to relax and enjoy a game, Camel Up or Camel Cup, who knows, might be your game. My number 38. Also new to list is my number 37 and number 37 is a worker placement game or as you might call it as well it's a dice placement game and I'm talking about the voyages of Marco Polo. Yes this game is well it's a really good game uh, in which you are trying to score points by doing certain actions by fulfilling contracts uh, in, for which you have to have these resources to sell or to trade in to, to finish a contract. You are moving this worker around a board, going to different places, scoring you points and giving you more actions on the board to do. Now, the cool thing is each round each player rolls all their dice, it gets into their dice pool and when it's their turn they can use one or more dice to perform certain actions on the board. If the action has already been taken you might have to pay that player for to, to do that action and if it's, well, if it's free you still might have to pay for an action. There is always a possibility on the board which you can take. There are some a few spots that are open for everyone to use, even though it, another player has used it already, uh, to gain some money, to gain some camels, whatever. And well, it's not maybe it's not a heavy game, but it's certainly medium uh, weight game. There are lots of options in this game, a lot of ways to score points, and that's the cool thing about this. You have always something you can do. There are always options, possibilities to take to, well, to get you to the points needed to try to win the game. A really great game, The Voyages of Marco Polo, or as we say in Belgium, In the Voetsporen van Marco Polo. That's it for the lesson Dutch.
and this is find number 37, if I'm not mistaken, yes, 37, Voyage of Marco Polo. Number 36 is a game that dropped 8 places, it was 26 last year, no, 28 last year, uh, Mad is, Mad is hard, uh, and it's a game that plays over 10 minutes, it's a hectic game, it's a stressful game, for me it's the fun kind of stress, but I might think that there are some people who don't like that stress either, but I'm talking about Escape, the Curse of the Temple and which players are trying to get out of this collapsing cursed temple. Very easy, each, play, each time you play there is this soundtrack that goes, or you can use a sand timer, but with the soundtrack it's way more fun, also way more stressful. So players are rolling dice and you have to roll certain combinations to get into rooms to reveal new rooms, or to get these gems of a reserve onto these altars. You have to get as many of those gems on altars around the temple so you can get out of the last room more easy. But two times in this game you hear this gong and that means you have to hurry to the start chamber again. You you're trying to move back and if you don't manage to get there in time, the door shuts and you lose a die making it a lot more difficult to get around and to escape in later in the game. Really fun game, really frantic, hectic, but I really like it a lot. It's a great gateway game, but as I said, not for everyone, but it is for me an awesome game. Escape! The Curse of the Temple. Alright, we're at 35 already and 35 is a game that I bought after I saw some really interesting and good comments on Twitter and other social media and the game is called Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game, the probably game with the longest title game. Uh, I did a playthrough for this one and uh, I really like this one. This is uh, a filler game, it doesn't take too long, it's about 30 minutes to play. And in this game you uh, players are rolling dice and those dice are rolled a little bit like in a Yahtzee kind of way. And uh, you try to make a blend of coffee with the dice. Well, that's the theme, it's just the dice have different colors of bean on, beans on them and they have a certain value, so uh, the, the colors represent a different kind of quality of the, of the beans that you will collect. And you try to collect multiple of them so you can make a strong blend. If you have four of uh, a color, it's a, a decent uh, strong blend. And then players are uh, rolling uh, to try to beat that blend of yours. If you still have the strongest or best blend at the uh, beginning of your next turn, you score some points and then you get to choose what you do. You always take away one of the dice on your blend and then you decide to keep it and maybe it will get around the table again and score you more points or you roll your dice again giving you an opportunity to get some special abilities as well to mitigate the dice rolling. So it is a dice game, it has some luck involved with it, but mostly it is mitigatable. It's not sure if that's a word. Uh, and it's a really fun game, very light, very easy to teach, easy to learn and uh, easy to play. My number 35, Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game. Number 34 is a really small game with a lot of uh, things to it because it is a complete deck building game. I'm talking about Star Realms. Star Realms is a two player game in which uh, players try to destroy each other. Each player starts with 50 life points um, and the goal is to let, 
your opponent drop to zero and you do that by buying new cards which represent spaceships with different abilities there are four colors of cards in this game and if you play a card of a certain color and you play another one it might increase their power and they might have some synergy with each other really interesting game really fast playing there also is a great app it is free there are things that you can pay for to get extra uh, possibilities in the app game but if you want to give this a try i suggest you give it a try you download the app and you try it or you just buy this game it is really cheap it's uh it's not that many cards so it cannot be expensive so a really good game it's unbelievable how many game and how many fun is packed in this small little box so it's my number 34 star realms My number 33 dropped a few spots, I think. Let me see, it dropped 16 spaces, but that means it has dropped, but it is still there, so I still like it a lot. It is the only game that has a train team uh, <laughs> to it in this top 50. I don't like the team, I don't like train games, but I really like this one because it is in my top 50 that says a lot because I can look past the team and the game I'm talking about is Trains by AEG and designer Hisachi Hayashi now this game is a deck builder as well as was Star Realms but in this game you are trying to have the best train company or uh, what else and uh, you do that by buying more cards, playing cards which make you put uh, rails on the board because this is a deck building game that also uses a board which makes it kind of special. You are building some uh, train stations and you are also trying dominion wise to buy cards which give you more victory points at the end of the game. Now the most special thing about this one is the board of course but also whenever you build something you are going to get waste and waste are these cards that absolutely do nothing so they can uh, slow down your deck there are ways to get rid of waste and uh, to so that you don't have to worry about that too much and the reason why this dropped is be mostly because there is this uh, expansion uh, standalone expansion rising suns which i still don't have because i think it's quite expensive here in belgium and that's why i didn't buy it but it that expansion has a two has two player maps to it and also some uh, objective cards like in ticket to ride uh, which well uh, pushes you a little bit to build a certain route on the board but this is my number 33 uh, yes, so it's uh, still there. St I still like this game very much. So check it out. Uh, trains. Number 32, completely new to this list. Actually, it is the newest addition to my collection as well and it's a worker placement game about making wine and then of course I spoil it already it is a viticulture now viticulture is uh, as I said a worker placement game you are trying to make wine and the cool thing about this game is that it's uh, it managed to be really thematic because you have to do every step of this process you have to get vines that you can plant on your fields you can get you can harvest the vines so you have grapes you can make wine of those grapes and then you can fulfill orders by selling those wines that you made really cool game if it wasn't that thematic if it didn't work as well it would be very dry uh, but as it is dry wine can be really good really smart game it absolutely really really uh, it plays really fluently it is uh, it does something I I didn't know it to be honest it is it's way simpler than I thought it would be and that's what makes this game so cool because it 
has a lot going on. You have many choices. You always have to choose what will I do. There are certain spots that can already be taken by your opponents. And that makes it for a real interesting uh, race to get those wines you want to fulfill these orders. Will you do the order now or will you wait and let those grapes and let those wine well age a little bit so they can get better. So really interesting from beginning to the end. Uh, Viticultures, well it lives up to the hype it has gotten this year and I really like it. Viticultures, my number 32. My number 31 is a game that I've been playing with some friends of mine who are really into Star Wars. I'm playing the evil guy, uh, or all the evil guys to be honest, and they are playing a uh, hero each. And of course I'm talking about Star Wars Imperial Assault, which is a one versus all dungeon crawler in which one player, as I'm doing, plays the evil side uh, and the other are playing some heroes not the famous heroes like Han Solo and uh, all the other cool characters from the Star Wars but you have these other characters who are a little bit similar to those famous ones who are doing their own thing next to the real story of the movies which is in my opinion really interesting it gives you a feeling that you are doing these missions to help the movies uh, work as they do or not because of course evil can win as well although in the first missions it's uh, hard for the evil uh, player to uh, win something but so why is this my 31 because i really like it uh, it could be higher because it's, it's a really good game but i don't get to play it as much as i want to it has been hard to find uh, evenings to get us all together but still it is cool, it is thematic, it is Star Wars, so it is my 31 Star Wars Imperial Assault. And there you go, that's my next 10 games, 30, uh, 40 to 31. We're almost halfway and uh, I hope you are liking this list. I'm really curious about what you think of these 10 games. So if you think they are overrated, underrated or if you like them as well, then please comment below. I'm really curious about what you think of these games. Well, next time we go from 30 to 21. We are getting to the really, really awesome games. Although these games uh, that I just mentioned are really good as well. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you pretty soon. Please find me on Twitter. I'm at Vitruvian Gamer there and I love to see you there. And I love to see you at my next video. See you soon. See you all in the future. Bye bye.